we have had issues with the three-point hitch at the back of the John Deere 6010 tractor for the last few years. Uh, we had uh, trouble uh, a while back that the stepper had, uh, it's a plastic thing on top of it, the control motor for it that uh, had taken in water so that would uh, explain a bit. So that was replaced, you can see it here, it's the shiny part, the rest is green. But it's not, it's been acting up lately also, so there was a suggestion it's like an angle valve that that could be faulty. We tested it with it on the machine, what the resistance it produced. Uh, I couldn't really see this being anything that would fail, but we bought a new one, it wasn't terribly expensive, so, uh, and there was really no noticeable difference between them but we installed a new one anyway just to take that out of the equation uh, we took the old stepper and did some testing on that and uh, to figure out how you could give it a few pulses and see the sprocket actually move and to verify that the new one seems to be had measured that they had good resistance or uh, that the coils inside it seems to be at uh, the correct where they should be so we had the other one out but there is kind of an indentation and a spring that holds it in the center position and we couldn't give it pulses fast enough to kind of move it out of that indentation so we forced it to the side and and uh, gave it a few pulses uh, in the same pattern we had tested out on the old one and see that we could get it to start moving and it slowly started inching its uh, inching away and moving a tiny fraction so we didn't want to push this too hard uh, so but we can't see that being faulty we had things apart looking for anything broken with the wiring Making sure there wasn't any high resistance on any of the cables, uh, suggesting something starting to break. We couldn't find anything suspicious. We could uh, borrow a kind of a diagnostics tool, and I found some video explaining how to calibrate. It's not the exact same tractor, but it has the same hitch. Uh, control system so I can't see it being too far off that you should get the numbers on it and I could also read the fault codes and we had plenty because we had had things disconnected when the machine had been started I still couldn't get it to to move so I took the control box for the uh, lift out and started checking if I could find anything wrong with the wiring checking everything and it's uh, mainly the connector at the top that's uh, connected to to the uh, computer unit itself so couldn't find any noticeable problems so bolted that back in place uh, did notice that it started moving when I wiggled this contact around I was on my way to start kind of doing a bridge connection here and being able to measure back here and then I ended up messing up that I forced it too high and blew a hydraulic hose back here but uh, check the connection and uh, if I bent out the, the it's probably been on and off so many times I bent out the, the little blades in there and to get better connection and had to change to to getting that hose out and replacing that kind of hard in there getting any video footage because it's quite tight in this machine also with all the hoses with the hoses replaced I could go back to checking what was up and the, the two dials at the back that controls the maximum lift height and the speed I could not get any good readings on them and it was beeping on me and in, in some of the modes and that's apparently a bad sign according to the video I found so uh, better disconnect some more things and s measure these uh, 
I did have a quite the smooth transitions from low to high resistance on both of them but they were a little odd that they at the far high end they went up a little and then the last little s uh, bit they kind of went down in resistance a little if that's normal I don't know but uh, we ended up deciding to to uh, order I also checked the uh, wiring harness up to the those connections we ended up ordering a new uh, like uh, dial system for the lift control with the dials and it also has some more pieces uh, for the the others and new buttons and everything it's quite ex was quite expensive so I really hope this would solve the problems and it took two weeks to get here two weeks to get from the dealer so that was annoying also and I couldn't really they don't do exactly the same as much when you get to the high end but they do dip a tiny bit in resistance at the end so that was discouraging but it was purchased so we put it back in place and still there are not the same values I hoped I would see here really and the, the well uh, they don't seem to function exactly as they should. It's not fully solved the problem. It's possible to make it when you drive it, it goes too high. We p p pull the part a little more and check the wirings to the other knobs up there and also open up the fuse box to see that there was nothing that was kind of rubbing in there. But. We have put it back together now and it's usable even if it's annoying. Open the control box also. It's not the epoxy filled box at least, but I wonder if there's something acting up in here causing a few issues and that's an expensive box.